Bon Joshua stepping into the batter's box to lead it off against Fern Rule as for the moment the clouds move in and obscure the sun here at Tiger Stadium. Rule looking in here for the play-by-play -play is Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul Carey. Ready to go. The wind up in the pitch. He punts the ball toward first. Thompson feels it. Makes the play unassisted. Tagging the runner coming down the line. There's one away. Jason grabbed that bunt. It was a rather hard one. Got all the way to first base. And then they raced over and tagged to Joshua before he could get to the bag. Robin Yacht will be the batter now. One pitch and one away. Robin, a right-hand hitting shortstop. Outfield playing him straight away. And rule delivers. Yacht takes a cut and misses. Strike one. He's batting 284 in 25 games, a couple of home runs at nine RBIs. Bright and sunny on Mother's Day in Detroit, but very breezy. The wind uh, coming from third base toward first. Here's a drive to left. It may be all the way. It's hooking. It is a foul ball. Ooh, that was close. It made the seat, but it hooked into foul territory. Well, that one started out fair by some eight to ten yards but it had such a severe hook that it ended up in foul territory. And the odd thing is, we've got a terrific wind blowing in from the left field corner across the field. Had the ball gotten up at all, would have straightened it out somewhat. Just a long strike. Two strikes on Robin Young. Rule ready to work again. He delivers. It's a fast ball outside. Tiger infield, Mankowski at third, Verizer back in action at short, Fuentes at second, Thompson back in action at first base. In the outfield, Kemp in left, the floor center, Ogilvy right. Here's a foul upstairs. One and two, the count on Robin. Milwaukee has dropped out of first place. They are now one full game back of the league leading Yankees. Or to be uh, correct, I guess I should say the division leading Yankees. And the Brewers have lost four straight. There's a ball outside. 2-2 two, two on Young. Rue checks his sign with Milt May about ready for action again. It's a 2-2 two, two count. Swing and a tapper foul rolling in the dirt over to the on-deck circle where Cooper's waiting. Seventh start of the year for Vern Rule. All his appearances has been of the starter. And it's his first time out against the Brewers. He beat him twice last year, 2 0 against him last season. There's a ball low. Oh, he missed the far corner. Full count on Robin Young. That is a very strong breeze uh, whipping in from left field. And it's swirling down around the home plate area. Time called by umpire Rich Garcia. Rule sets and pitches. Here's a foul on the screen. It's in the uh, umpire's room talking to Rich as he was uh, rubbing up the baseballs with that the Delaware mud we've been telling you about. Mr. Shalak said, yep, the price has gone up. It's not $28 a can anymore. It's now $50 a can. <laughs> There's a looper hit the right field. It is a fair ball down the line. He'll go for two. Up with the ball is Ogilvy. And it is a two-base hit for Robin Young. A little slicing pop fly that fell in fair territory by a foot. Joe Brinkman was saying... And when uh, the umpires worked in the minor leagues, that they had to dig their own dirt. And uh, they would have a spot, they'd find a favorite spot around the ballpark and then wouldn't tell the other umpires because you had to have your own spot. You didn't want anybody encroaching. And sometimes you'd have to sit out in a car in the parking lot and uh, they'd give you 12 baseballs to rub up. Up here in the majors, it's usually about 60, 65. Here's Cooper at the plate now. Man on second base, that's Yunt with a double. One man down. Well, this one has just started. It's the first inning in Detroit. Left hand batting, Cooper takes a strike. Rule hit the outside corner with a fastball. Cooper, the leading hitter on the team at 333, with four home runs, 16 runs batted in. 
No score first inning, but the Brewers have a man at second and one away. Very wide. That one slipped away from Rule. High and outside, a breaking ball. It's about the biggest win we've seen this year, I think, Paul. Yeah, it's uh, sh knocking the shutters of our booth all around the place. Blowing paper all over the place. Now Rule uh, sets, holds it, the belt delivers. There's a cut and a miss. Breaking ball about knee high and over the plate. We'll have a lot of other games to uh, bring you scores from, but so far there are no games reporting in. One ball, two strikes. That's the count on Cooper. He swings a line shot. Base hit left field. Yacht uh, goes to third. The ball picked up by Kemp. Yacht will hold it third. Here's the throw cut off by Mankowski near the mound. Runners at first and third. Yacht might have scored on that blow, but he went back towards second as Rule delivered to the plate. And that cost him uh, a couple of steps, and he couldn't get past third. Here's Sal Bando. Bando had a home run yesterday, the first as a Brewer. He's hitting 244, has 12 RBIs. Infield and double play depth on Sal. He stands very deep in the batter's box, likes to move into the pitch. Rule sets and delivers, and Bando takes the ball outside. Burn Rule in early trouble here in the third and final game of the series. Bando waiting. Cooper at first base. Shunt coming down the line a little bit at third. Now the 1-0 pitch is cut on to, to third base. Over to second, one relay to first. Double play by the Tigers. Mankowski to Fuentes to Thompson as Phil got rid of the ball. In a big hurry, it was a slow high hopper, but he converted it into a double play. No runs, two hits, no errors. One man left at the end of a half inning. Milwaukee nothing. The Detroit Tigers coming to bat. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Provided they are accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right, and there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd, right, Katie? Right, 22 winners. One from each Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger iron-on patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So, kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th and sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. Here's a Tiger wedding anniversary salute to Mr. and Mrs. Fred Raschke. Mr. Raschke also celebrating his birthday on this date. Loyal Tiger fans from Detroit, and we wish them continued happiness. Rookie right-hander Moose Haas is on the mound for Milwaukee, tuning up now. Moose, his first name is Brian. He's a native of Baltimore, makes his home in Owens Mill, Maryland right now, which is uh, just out there in the valley, outside of the city of Baltimore. He's a 20-year-old pitcher. And uh, last year worked uh, against the Tigers. Well, the final day of the season, worked three innings in relief. He had a record last year of 0-1 with the Brewers after coming up from Spokane, where he... Won 13 and dropped nine. Here's Ron LaFleur, the first man to test the rookie right-hander in his first time out against the Tigers. LaFleur batting 242. Takes a fastball, and uh, this young man throws hard. Ball one, the count on Ron. 
Brewers had a threat going, but a fine double play by the Tigers killed it off. Outside with a fastball. 2-0, the count of the leadoff man, LaFleur. Bando at third, Yunk playing short, Money at second, Cooper at first in the Milwaukee infield. There's a strike. He fed him a fastball in the inside corner. Dan Thomas is in left field today. Joshua in center, unless Cano is in right. And the right-hander Haas into motion delivers. Here's a breaking pitch over. A good pitch. Just above the knees. 2-2. Two -two. Tito Fuentes waiting to get the on-deck circle for the Tigers. Here's the wind-up in the pitch. He swings and misses a slow curve. Fooled him. Haas strikes out the first man he faces. And here's Tito stepping in to see what he can do. Fuentes hitting 326, still hitting uh, much better right-handed than left. He's batting left-handed this afternoon. Tigers have seen a lot of left-hand pitches, but today they're looking to the right-hander. Against right-handers, they've won six and lost eight. Against left-handers, they've won four and lost six. Not a great deal of difference. Tito looks, it's a strike called. He seemed to be ready to bump that ball, but he did not offer on it. No score first inning. Tigers and the Brewers at Tiger Stadium. Here it comes. He takes a strike on the outside corner. Now Haas looks for the sign from his catcher, Charlie Moore. Goes into the windup, delivers. Very wide, one and two, the count on Fuentes. Swing, there's a fly ball lifted to right, fairly deep. Lascano going back and makes the catch on the warning track. The wind playing tricks with that one. Lascano was able to follow it and pull it in for the out. Ernie, I'm going to run out for some hammer and nails here to nail things down. This wind is really terrific today. Matt the hatches. Rusty stopped about an hour, two down. Rusty with a 221 batting mark. He takes the ball in close, low and inside on trusty, rusty ball one. No score first inning. Hostel delivers fastball outside, two and oh, the count on stop. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. Right through the heart of the plate for a strike. Rusty Choker, that stick waiting. Here it comes. He swings and there's a line shot foul by about five feet. Down the first base way. Breeze almost directly in from left field toward the plate now. Once in a while, it'll uh, seem to be blowing across in third toward first. Might help a ball to right field slightly. Here's the pitch to stop. Swing and a foul. Hit out of play. That one in the dirt behind the plate. No game for the Tigers tomorrow. They'll resume action Tuesday night against the Minnesota Twins. Bob Sykes versus Pete Redford in that first game, and Dave Roberts against Jeff Hahn in the second and final game of the homestand. Here's a foul fly out of play on the rooftop over back a third.
So young Mr. Haas, a 20-year-old right-handed pitching again. A 2-2 delivery, swung on a bounding ball to short. Hard hop onto the glove of Yon. He throws over to Cooper, and the Tigers are out 1-2-3. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. That at the end of one, Detroit nothing, Milwaukee nothing. J.P. McCarthy's Focus, 12-15-1, afternoons on WJR. Steve Allen. I worked on a showboat once before in Lowell, Michigan. Yeah. They told me if I was a hit there, it could mean Chesney. <laughs> so uh, I had to come back and pay that off. I mean, no, it's a great, great pleasure to do it. I like showboats. Please help me welcome the very lovely Arlene Dahl. That's why when people say, what do you think of women's lip and have you never felt put upon? I said no, because I was in an industry where men and women were judged according to their personality and their talent. Oh, thank you. I do. For sure. I fail in a lot of things, but I realized that, um, you know, I was young and you make mistakes, and I think that from your failures, a lot of good comes out of them. J.P. McCarthy's Focus, 1215 to 1, afternoons on WJR. To help you better understand the issues and developments in your busy world, WJR presents Memorandum, Notes and Comments on the Passing Scene. Hear it three times daily on WJR. Well, we'd like to salute on uh, birthday. It comes up tomorrow, the mother of a gentleman out on Mount Elliott, great Tiger fan, Mr. George Stelt. Mother is a great Tiger fan also, and she'll reach the age of 90 tomorrow. Our congratulations and best wishes. Well, here's Dan Thomas to lead off against Vern Rule. Dan missed the first two games because of his religious conviction. He's the left fielder for the Milwaukee Brewers, and he takes a cut and misses on the first pitch. Tall, lanky, right-hand batting uh, Thomas. He's hitting 256. Swings is a drive hit to center field, left center. LaFleur there makes a catch. The wind definitely held up that ball. Hit pretty hard, but it ended up in a fairly deep left center field. One up and one away, and Sixto Lescano will be the batter. Right-handed batting, uh, right fielder. He's uh, put on a little heft uh, since he broke into the major leagues. Sixto came in at a very tender age. He's only 23 now, and he broke in back in 74 in the majors. 71, an organized ball. Right-hand batter waiting, and the pitch is swung on and popped in the air. Short set of field. Going back for Winters. The wind will play havoc with this one. And here comes Oakley. Oakley makes the catch. And it ended up in right field. Now, Jojo White told us one time about a fly ball hit the center field. that was caught down in the left field foul territory. And after looking at this win, I'm almost ready to believe him. Although JoJo was a teller of tall tales. Here's Don Money at the plate, and he takes a strike. Money batting 221. No score. Second inning. Milwaukee at bat. Rule delivers. Strike called. Rich Garcia said so. Two strikes now on Money. Infield back. Outfield fairly deep. He takes a ball just off the corner. One ball and two strikes. Mike Hegan uh, in the regular lineup today as a designated batter is on deck. Here's a strike called. He struck him out. Money drops his bat right on top of the plate and it goes out to his second base position. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left at the end of one and a half innings. Milwaukee nothing, Detroit nothing. Bob McDaniel goes to work at a cat cracker at the Marathon Refinery in Robinson, Illinois. He doesn't work alone. He gets together with Eldon Cooper, Keith Mason, and Werner Ferguson, and together they go about the business of turning heavy oils into gasoline and fuel oil. Bob McDaniel could work alone. The job wouldn't get done as well, or at all, without the help of Eldon, Keith, and Werner, because each of them brings something special to the job. 
they get together to do it better. A company is like its people, because it is people. When Marathon found oil, our oil people got together with some pipeline people, who got together with some refining people, who got together with some service station people, so we could do it better. We got together. We got together to do it better. Tigers coming to bat now against the uh, young Moose Haas in the last half of the second. Moose says he got his nickname because when he was born, not because uh, he is uh, very big, but when he was born, uh, his father just figured he'd be a big boy, so he said, uh, we'll call him Moose. Remember Mule Haas, who played in the American League, uh, mostly with the Philadelphia A's. Outfielder, then there was Bruno Haas a little bit later on. Here's Ben Ogilvy to bat now against the Moose Haas. No score, second inning. And uh, Ben takes a fastball low, ball one. Ben batting 258, he has five home runs and 13 RBIs. He and Thompson are tied for the home run leadership on the team. Here's a ball that missed the far corner, 2-0. Oh. Standing deep, feet close together. Slender left hand of adding Ogilvy waiting. Here it comes. He takes a strike outside corner. Steve Kemp waits on deck. You can hear the bird chirping over there from the Tiger dugout. Mark Fidrich. Here's a swing and a miss. Well, Haas so far has mixed his breaking stuff in with that good fastball. And the Tigers have not had a man on base. Batters at a disadvantage the first time they see a pitcher. They saw him a little bit last year, but not enough really to remember a whole lot. Now the right-hander ready, goes into action, delivers. Here's a line shot to left. It'll be a hit. That is the first Tiger hit. Ogilvy singles to left to start the Tigers in the second inning. And now young Mr. Kemp steps in. He had a two for two yesterday. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jay Roberts is good company when you want a friend. Join him here at 1130 on Night Flight 76. And Mike Morph's Kaleidoscope takes center stage in the theater, if you remind, afternoons at 1.15. Both a tradition on WJR Detroit, Radio 76. Kemp batting 256. He uh, has four home runs and 13 RBIs. Picking up in his hitting. Now scraping around down there. In the left hand about his box, ready to face the right hand to Haas. Man on first, Ogilvy, nobody out, no score, second inning. And Steve takes a breaking pitch, low, ball one. Well, the other games are getting underway. No other scores to report yet, but we'll try to keep you posted on those as we go through this Sunday afternoon. Throw well, the first to Cooper, Ogilvy back in time. A couple of ex-Red uh, Sox players over there together. Another throw to first. The baseball chapel speaker today was Billy Zioli. Who was the religious advisor of President Ford. Gentleman from Grand Rapids. Billy is a maker of gospel films now. Uh, stepping in waiting and it is still 1-0 oh on him. Here's a pitch. He swings and fouls it for the screen. Jason Thompson at the on-deck circle. Jason back in action. He was out yesterday with his injured uh, hip. No score, second inning at Tiger Stadium. Kemp waits on a 1-1 pitch, but instead the throw will go to first base. 
I think the pitchers in the last couple of years have gotten a lot more conscious about holding runners on. Base stealing uh, coming to the fore again in baseball. Here's a pitch. It's a ball tight at the shoulder. Two and one the count on Kemp. No game for the Tigers tomorrow, but they'll resume action Tuesday night. We hope you'll be out there. The Minnesota Twins with a very good ball club be coming in. They're leading the Western Division right now. A heavy hitting team, the Twins. Next pitch is high and outside, a breaking pitch. Three and one. This is about the first Tiger hitter who's been ahead of the pitcher. Hoffs uh, ready to go sets and deals there's a fly ball lifted to left field here comes Thomas chasing the wind takes a little bit he's there makes a catch and Ogilvy halfway to second base comes on back to first one out one on and that'll bring up Jason Thompson Jason hurt himself in the first game of this series doing a Ground ball in the ninth inning. He fell down and uh, bruised his hip. He had a strawberry on that hip anyway. And he just couldn't swing the bat very well yesterday. Bill Beam's been working with him, giving him treatments, and he's ready. There's a pitch strike call. Throw to second. Ogilvy is safe on the steal. Got a good jump, and the throw from Moore was not a very good one. He hurried it. It'll be the second steal for Ben this year. Robin Yacht covered. But he had no chance to put the tag on the runner. Thompson waiting at the plate now on the right hander Haas. Ogilvy with a lead down off second base. And there's a cut and a miss by Jason. Taking his time about resettling into the batter's box. Outfield is slightly toward right. The infield a little bit deeper on the right side than on the left. And the pitch, he takes the ball outside. One and two to count on him. Milt May will be the next Tiger batter. We're in that uh, group of left-hand hitters now. Set by Haas, he pitches. There's a bounding ball to first base. Cooper has it. The pitcher Haas covers, takes the throw. Thompson's out, and Ogilvy uh, gets to third. Jason uh, still seems to be having some trouble. Didn't look as if he can run full force there. Ogilvy on third with two down. It's up to Milt May to try to deliver him as a run. May off to a good start with the bat this year, hitting 319 in 20 games. One home run for Milt and four runs batted in. This game is scoreless in Detroit. Tigers have a man at third base. Not time call. There's a lot of swirling dust down around home plate. Infield deep now with two down. Haas rocks and pitches. May swings and fouls it away. That one got uh, Rich Garcia on the foot. Talking about that play at, uh, in the first game of the series, I believe it is, when uh, Fuentes dropped the ball on purpose. Uh, Nesta Shalak said, yeah, Rich was out there, the umpire Rich Garcia, and he called him out in Spanish. Rich said, yep, I sure did. I said, no, no. <laughs> Here's the pitch. It's a swing and a bounding ball. Deep short. Got way over. Bobbles it. Can't make a play. The run scores. May is safe, and Oakley crosses the plate. Yacht went in the hole to his right at short. It will be scored as an error. He had the ball, and then as he got ready to release it, he bobbled it, and then it was too late to do anything. So the Tigers on the error. Jump in front, one to nothing in the second inning. Now well, here's Phil Rankowski. 
Phil was our guest on the pregame show. He's batting uh, 400 right now. Six RBIs. Left hand batter takes the ball low. Ball one. Swing and a foul fly hit out of play over on the third base side. That wind's blowing so hard you can't even put a pencil on the table. It'll blow off. There's a bounding ball up the middle right over the mound. Picked up now by Money. He makes a sweep at the runner May and can't get him. Everybody's safe. Two men on, two men out. That will be a single by Mankowski. On the scratchy side, but I'm sure he'll take it. Ooh, that was really itching one out. But when you're going good, that'll happen. Little short hopper that just got past the mound, and then Money tried to charge it from second. May was coming from first to second. Money's best bet was try to make a sweeping tag of May. But he couldn't uh, get to him. He'd come too far in to catch the ball. Here's Tommy Verizer with two men on and two men out. Tigers lead one to nothing. Verizer takes a strike. That was a breaking pitch. Tommy hitting 200. The ninth man in the Tiger batting order. Outfield is playing him around toward right. And he swings and pops one on the right field side, but it's going to blow out of play. Cooper follows it, but it's in the seats. Strike two, the count on Verizon. You'll find the outfielders today will be playing much more shallow than they normally do because of that wind behind them, especially in left. May, who's not a fast runner, moving off second. Mankowski, who's about average runner, moving off first. He's got a... Fairly large lead at first base, Mankowski. one nothing. the Tigers ahead in the second inning. Off sets and pitches, and Verizer takes a fastball wide. Most of the players not in action have their windbreakers on today, although it's not as cool as it was yesterday. It's still on the cool side. Waiting on a 1-2 pitch. Verizer takes strike three called. He struck him out. That one right in above the knees, and Tommy is out for looking. Second strikeout for Haas. The Tigers get a run, one run on the two hits, one error, two runners are left. At the end of two, Detroit one, Milwaukee nothing. <laughs> When it comes to racing, motorcycle champions have one thing in common. Champion spark plugs. Last year, for instance, champions sparked all 16 major U.S. and world motorcycle championships, including motocross and road racing. Is it any wonder when most factory teams go racing, champion spark plugs go along? So when your bike needs new plugs, do what racers around the world do. Fill her up with champion. Tigers ahead, one to nothing at the end of two, and it'll uh, be Mike Hegan to lead off for Milwaukee against Vernon Rule in the Milwaukee third. Pittsburgh leads Cincinnati, one to nothing at the end of one. That's our first other score that we have to report to you. Remember, my friends, that the advanced ticket office here at Tiger Stadium is open every day from 9 to 6 with tickets for any game of the season. Box seats of $5, reserved to 4 and also at the 13 Hudson Ticket Services outlet all through the area and at the 11 other Tiger ticket agencies in Michigan and Ontario. And, of course, you can always order by mail. Well, here's Mr. Hegan at the plate. This is Mike Hegan, the left-hand batter, and he takes the ball low. Ball one on Mike. He 
He's 0 for 6 so far this year. Swing, there's a high fly lifted to short right center. LaFleur and Ogilvy both there, and it's Ben to make the catch. One up and one away. Charlie Moore, the ninth man in the batting order, stepping up. Moore, a right-hand batter. Now that single by Mankowski gives him uh, six for the last nine trips of the plate. Bounding ball to third. Mankowski knocks it down, picks it up, throw to first. He's out. A hard one to the third baseman. Two down, and the batter will be Von Joshua, the leadoff man. Former National Leaguer. One of the many big leaguers who is a native of Oakland, California. All right around in there. Here's a cut of the miss. Talking to uh, Steve Bry before the game, and he told me that he and uh, Miss Debbie have settled out there in the Bay Area. Fastball high, one and one, the count on Joshua. Pittsburgh now leads Cincinnati 2 0 at the end of two. Rule delivers. There's a foul upstairs off the screen and then down below. One and two, the count on Vaughn. Tigers ahead of this game, one to nothing. We're in the third inning. Milwaukee at bat. They've got the bases empty and two away. Rule pitches. Sweet at a miss. He tipped it to the mid of May for the third out. No runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left at the end of two and a half innings. Detroit won the Brewers nothing. You're at bat in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. The pitcher checks the runner at first, and here's the pitch. Who was the last pitcher to win 300 games? Why not think about it over a cool, refreshing Labatt's Blue? The answer? Early win reached the 300 win mark at the age of 43 in 1963 for the Cleveland Indians. Beer and baseball really go together. Always have, always will. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt's. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by the Bat Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. Well, the early story here today on the Sunshiny Sunday is the error by Robin Yunt that allowed the Tigers to score a run in the second inning. They lead one to nothing. Haas on the mound, the rookie right-hander ready to pitch to Ron LaFleur. Ron uh, struck out his first turn at bat. One nothing, Tigers ahead in the third. Haas rocks and pitches. It's a strike. He got that curve on the outside corner. Minnesota leads Toronto at Toronto. One to nothing at the end of two. The Twins come in after that game and open a series here tomorrow, uh, Tuesday night. There's a cut and a miss. The fastball sped by him. Wind up and the pitch on the way. There's a high foul that will drift in the seats on the first base side. Milwaukee leaves here after this game and they'll have a 20 double header with the Cleveland Indians tomorrow night in Cleveland. Here's a strike two delivery. It's a fastball wide, a one and two on the floor. But Wendy's uh, waiting on deck, and then it'll be Rusty Staub. Jacket day at Tiger Stadium. Swing, he struck him out. 
LaFoa went for an outside fastball. That's the third strikeout for Haas. He's fanned LaFoa twice. Here's Tito and a fly ball to the right fielder Les Cano, the first trip. Each team with two hits, the Tigers, uh, aided by an error, put together their two hits in the second inning to get a run in. Moose Haas on the mound, ready to deal. There's a bunt back toward the mound, past it. Yunt picks it up, can't make the play, and safe at first is Tito. That was one of those hard bunts that he's adept at. He hit it hard past the mound. Yunt charged, tried to one-hand it, but couldn't hang on to it. It'll be a single. Of the third Tiger hit, they've all been singles. Here's Rusty Staub uh, stepping in. He hit a one hop, a hard one hop out of the shortstop, Yunt, who tossed him out for the final out of the first inning. Rusty takes a curve. It's in too close. Ball one on the designated batter. Throw over to first base, but the run at the wind is back in plenty of time. Tigers lead one to nothing in the third inning. And another toss by Haas to Cooper. No damage. Stop chokes the bat, leans in waiting, now takes a ball that's very high. Two and oh, the count on him. They've got the infield uh, in double play depth for Milwaukee. And Bando fairly deep at third for the left-hand batter. As they tap in the dirt, it's foul. Haas's cap blew off. The wind uh, took it and blew it over about halfway to first base. This booth may blow away. We may be broadcasting in flight here soon. <laughs> The 2-1 delivery is a wide one. Three balls and one strike. The count on Rusty. Aha, to the set position pitches. It's ball four. He walks. Oh, the Tigers have two men on, one away, and here comes Ogilvy, who scored the game's only run. That's the first walk issued by Haas. And there's a little confab going on to the mound. Charlie Moore's come out. Sal Bando, the third baseman's come over. They're discussing the situation. Hope you'll be out here with us on Tuesday night. Minnesota comes to town. Bob Sykes getting a starting assignment. Young left-hander with no one and loss record against Pete Redfern. Hope you'll be out here with us on Tuesday night. Minnesota comes to town. Bob Sykes getting a starting assignment. Young left-hander with no one and loss record against Pete Redfern. And on Wednesday, it'll be Roberts for the Tigers against Jeff Zahn. That'll be another night game, after which the Tigers hit the road. And they won't be back until the 24th of the month when they meet California. Ogilvy waiting. The pitch is a ball low to Ben. Ball one. Man on first, man on second, one man out. Next Tiger batter will be Steve Kemp. Aha, uh -huh, set the pitches. Here's a strike. He got a fastball over. So far, his control's been pretty good. That's the first walk, the one he should have stopped. Pitching against this row of left-hand batters. Fuente, Staub, Ogilvy, Kemp, Thompson, May, and Mankowski. Seven straight. 
There's a low one, and the count is two and one. Well, most of the time, I think when you see a right-hand pitcher go, Ralph Hauk will use two right-hand hitters, the top and the bottom men in the batting order, will be the only right-hand batters. Ogilvy waits on the 2-1 serve. Here it comes. He swings at the bonding ball to Cooper, has it. Go to Yacht, one. Relay back to the pitcher, covering. It's a double play. Good play as Haas got over to complete the DP. Cooper got rid of the ball in a hurry. Yacht relayed to Haas, and the Tigers are out of their third inning threat. They have no runs on one hit, a walk, no errors, one man left. That at the end of three, Detroit one, Milwaukee nothing. Let's take a look at the weather for the Detroit area. Sunny, breezy, and mild is the forecast for today for greater Detroit. High temperature of 65 to 68. It'll be clear and cold tonight with a low of 33 to 36 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high 57 to 60. Frost likely in the low-lying areas tonight, so take proper precautions. At 2 o'clock, the official temperature in Detroit, 68 degrees, relative humidity 28%, and the wind that the boys have been talking about out of the northwest at 30 miles an hour, gusting to 39. Elsewhere around Michigan at this time, 66 degrees in Ypsilanti, Lansing, and Kalamazoo, 69 in Jackson and Battle Creek, 63 in Grand Rapids, it's 60 in Flint. MEP says westbound I-94 between Van Dyke and Shane is moving very slowly due to construction in that area. WJR's Great Weekend puts you where the people are with special events, unique on-the-scene reports, total news, and sports. Tigers have a 1-0 lead going into the fourth inning. They got that run in the second on a single by Ogilvy. He stole second, and then with two down, they hit a ground ball to Yonder, who bobbled it, and the run scored. Here come the Brewers to bat in the fourth inning, and here comes Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you very much. It's Robin Yount, the young shortstop to lead it off against Vern Rule. Yount collected a bloop double in the first inning and reached uh, as far as third base. Rule ready to work. He has checked his outfield and infield into the motion. Here's the first pitch to Young. He swings and pops a fly ball to right field. Ogilvy under it now. Will move toward the line. And the wind carries it away, but he makes the catch. He had to wait and see which way that wind was going to carry it. Very, very stiff breeze. Almost a gale coming in from left field right now. One out in the fourth inning an adventure every time the ball gets up in the air today. There's Cecil Cooper who singled his first time up. The pitch from Rule is taken high. Breaking ball, ball one. Tigers with a run in the second inning, an unearned run, as a result of an error by shortstop Robin Young. Lead it one to nothing. There's a squibber toward the left side of the infield, deep in the hole. Verizer has it to throw. It's high, and Thompson had to come off the bag to take the throw. I don't know whether he would have gotten him anyway. It was a tough play. It was deep in the hole at short. We'll wait for the score, and he says it's a hit. Oh, well, Cooper is two for two. He's at first base with one down, and Sal Bando will be the batter. Bando bounced into a double play to end the first inning. Thompson holding on the bag at first as Cooper gets a pretty good lead to start off with. Here's the set by Rule. He delivers to the plate. Curve is a little high. Ball one. Action starting around the majors this afternoon. Uh, just getting underway. A couple of double headers, but they're both on the West Coast in the National League. Throw to first as Cooper draws the throw. He had that big lead again. Had to stretch out and coming back to the bag. Big Frank Howard out with a word for his base runner at first. Here's the set by Vern. And the pitch, Cooper goes. The pitch is taken for a strike. The throw to second. He slides in safely. Throw was a little bit to the first base side of the bag. Uh, Fuentes tried to sweep tag and uh, hoisted the glove in the air as though to prove he had him, but 
he wasn't going to convince Steve Palermo making the call down there at second base. So Cooper on at second in scoring position. The Tigers in front one to nothing. Bando took that pitch for a call strike. A 1-1 count on Sal. That's Cooper's fourth steal of the season. He has yet to be caught. A look at second by Rule. And the 1-1 pitch to Bando. He swings, a bouncer to short. On the high hop for Verizer, he goes to third. They've got Cooper in a rundown. Mankowski chasing him back toward second. Flips to Fuentes, and the tag is made. Staying at first is Bando. Well, Cooper committed himself, and Cooper may have twisted an ankle. In the chase between second and third, he is hobbled right now out there around shortstop. And he's going to be attended to. In fact, he's going to sit down on the grass. A put out goes 6 5 4 on Cooper with Bando safe on the fielder's choice at first base. And the trainer, Kurt Rayer, is out to check on the first baseman now. He's sitting on the grass of the infield. Manager Alex Grammis attending to him. And coach Jimmy Bregan over there as well. Cooper seemed to be all right when he was in the rundown, but it may have been that last turn just as he got near the bag at second. The little flip by Mankowski to Fuentes uh, made him detour once again and he seemed to come up lame at that point because Fuentes was able to make a relatively simple tag and remain near the bag at second so that Bando could not advance another base. Well they're still attending to Cooper down there and Rule is going to stay busy out on the mound. Next batter will be Danny Thomas is the young man who has gotten a lot of publicity of late for his religious beliefs, a member of the Worldwide Church of God, who, uh, because of the religion, does not play baseball from sundown Friday until sundown on Saturday. Well, now a hand for Cecil Cooper. He is walking off, walking better now than he was when he uh, came up lame out there at short being accompanied by the trainer Kurt Rayer and Alex Grammis. Walking back toward the Milwaukee dugout and they'll wait until he gets off the field. Oh, Thomas out of action both yesterday afternoon and Friday night because of uh, his religious convictions. In the lineup as the left fielder today. And at first two down the pitch outside for ball one. With so many Friday night games and Saturday afternoon games, it means that Thomas is going to uh, miss a lot of action this year. Here's the set and the pitch to him. He cuts and misses. A one and one on Dan. Thomas wears glasses uh, both at bat and in the field. set by rule and the one one pitch to him swung on and missed he was out ahead of a breaking ball one and two on Thomas now Bando with a short lead at first base he's going to go the pitch is swung on and popped foul into the upper deck Bando is not the speediest uh, man of foot, certainly, but he reads pitchers very well and uh, had some excellent success last year at Oakland. Uh, of course, last year at Oakland, Chuck Tanner let him run with abandon out there, and, uh, and everybody was pretty much free to run. There's a fly ball lifted to right field. That's deep. The wind's got it. Oakland goes back. It could be trouble. It's gone. That took off. It got up into the jet stream, blowing in from left field and carried into the upper deck in right field. A two-run homer for Dan Thomas as Bando scores ahead of him. And the Brewers take a two-to-one lead. The first homer of the year for Dan Thomas. And he's got a big grin as he comes along, shaking everybody's hand within reach. That got up into that breeze, which is more than a breeze today. Uh, 
McIntyre. Six to Lascano batting. With the bases empty, two down. The Brewers in front now, two to one. He takes the strike. Well, lined up by rule, they pitch outside, ball one. Thomas is not... I was going to say he's not known for his uh, home run uh, hitting, but uh, in checking his record, he has a good total in minor league play. He hasn't really been tested that much by major league pitching. 2-1 now, the count on Lascano. In the Eastern League, last year, he uh, collected 29 home runs to lead that league in homers. Had four homers with the Brewers in the late going. Inside and high for a ball. Three balls and a strike now on six to Loscano. Get a pop fly to Ogilvy and Wright his first time up. Here's the pitch. Tapped foul to the left of the plate. Oh, a windblown homer by Danny Thomas that got into the upper deck in section 37. Makes the difference in this game. There's ball four. Liscano draws a walk, the first issued by Vern Rule. That'll bring up Don Money. With two down, Liscano at first base. Rule with a mid on the knee. Bending in, getting the sign from May. Here's the set. And a throw to first. Back in time is Lescano. Now Vern is ready. Delivers to the plate. There's a pop-up behind second. Out into short center. Verizer is under it. Now the wind is carrying it away, but he makes the catch. He had to race into short right center field to make that catch. That retires the Brewers in the fourth inning. However, they pick up... Two runs on two hits, no errors, one runner left on base. After three and a half innings, it's Milwaukee 2, Detroit 1. Right now, Sears can help you get your car in shape for summer driving and save you money. Don't start out on vacation with worn tires. Get set now with Sears Steel Guardsman Radios, a rugged tire built for rugged roads. With two steel belts and two polyester cord radio plies. Sears Steel Guardsman Radio. Now at savings of $26 to $50 in sets of four. And if you've noticed your car swaying on sharp turns, if you're not quite in control the way you were, maybe you need new shock absorbers. Well, if you do, right now you can save $3 each on Sears heavy-duty shocks. Regular $7.99, now only $4.99 each. At this price, get a full set of four and get back in control. Here's another saving. Regular $1.99 oil filters, now only 99 cents. At Sears, where America shops. Keep the car going, always going. Stop Brian Haas, the rookie right-hander, known as Moose, has got himself a one-run lead now as he gets set to face the Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two-run homer by Dan Thomas. In the upper deck and right field in the top of this inning. Pirates have jumped in front of Cincinnati after three innings, two to nothing, getting one of their runs on a homer by Bill Robinson. Chicago and Atlanta no score after one inning and the Houston-St. Louis game just getting underway. Here's Steve Kemp to lead it off of the Tigers in the fourth inning. Up once in this game, he flied out the left field. The right-hander ready, delivers, low and inside, ball one on Steve. California at Boston, no score after an inning. At Toronto, we've gotten some word now. One to nothing, Minnesota leads the Blue Jays after two innings. The pitch to Kemp. He swings a bouncer to the right side. Big hop for Don Money. He flips to Cooper in time to get Kemp. Cooper apparently all right. He's back on the field for Milwaukee. Well, there's one down, nobody on, and that'll bring up Jason Thompson. Jason bounced out the first, his initial trip to the plate. 
Over in Cleveland, no score after an inning there. The White Sox and Indians. Steve Stone going against Al Fitzmorris in Cleveland. There's the pitch to Jason. He takes the breaking ball on inside. Well, Bill Lee is getting uh, his long-desired start for the Boston Red Sox today, going against Gary Ross of California. The pitch to Thompson. A little low, ball two. And they've got an ironic pairing of pitchers at New York. The Yankees against Oakland. It's Ellis pitching for Oakland. And Torres for New York. They were the principals in a recent trade between those two clubs. There's a call strike on Thompson. And we're reminded that a station break is long overdue, and I'll get one along the network at the first opportunity. The 2-1 pitch to Thompson. Takes inside, ball three. One out, nobody on. Tiger fourth inning. The Brewers lead 2-1. to one. Single game wrapping up the three-game series. The pitch to Jason. He swings and chops a foul to the right side. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Mark Avery takes it nice and easy from his vantage point in the music hall afternoons from 3 to 6. And Warren Pierce provides the evening sunshine with interviews and involvement nightly at 7. Both a tradition on WJR Detroit. Here's the pitch to Thompson. He takes ball four. Fastball a little high to Jason. Uh, question by the pitcher... Moose Haas. Well, Thompson draws a walk, the second given up by Haas. And it brings up Milt May, safe on an error by Robin Yount in the second inning, the play that scored Ben Ogilvy and gave the Tigers the run in the second. This is a pitch to Milt. He swings and fouls one to the screen. Just turned to 21 years old after the season got underway. He was signed out of high school by the Brewers in 1974. A stretch by Haas. And the pitch to May. Ball outside. One and one on Milt. Comes from Reistertown, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore. Area where the Tigers stay when they play in Baltimore these days. It's low for a ball. Two and one now on Milt May. Freddie Hatfield, the third base Tiger coach, wigwagging the signs to the plate. On first is Thompson. One down on the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the two-one pitch. Ball three. Well, Hoos, or Haas, brother, has uh, gotten behind, and here comes Sal Bando in to perhaps settle down as the young pitcher. Bando trotting back to his third base position again. Cooper will play behind the runner at first, just uh, barely behind Thompson. The pitch to May. Ground ball to Cooper. He goes to second. 4-1, the relay to first. In time, another double play the same way. The end of the third inning. A 3-6-1 double play with the pitcher Haas covering for the completion of the double play at first base. And that's all for Detroit in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. After four innings of play, it's Milwaukee 2, the Tigers 1. Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. It takes a lot of people with different skills and different talents to get that job done. We got people together we thought could do it better called the company Marathon. From the driller in Alaska to the roustabout in Texas from the driver in Atlanta to the welder in Wyoming When we found oil, we could have left the rest of the jobs to somebody else. But we had this idea that we could do it better. So we got people together who thought the same way we did.
careful blending of words and music came to a central theme. That's the criteria for Ted Strasser's Patterns in Music, a Sunday morning tradition, beginning at 8 here on Radio 76. Lots of youngsters out here on this bright and breezy Sunday for Jacket Day. We see a lot of blue in the stands for the blue vinyl jackets given away free today by the Tigers to all youngsters, 14 and under. They've got the old English D on the jacket. A lot of groups on hand to uh, supply themselves with jackets for the coming summer. Jerry Garson from Windsor brought uh, his Giants team out of the Windsor Central Little League over, for instance. There's a drive by Jim he or Mike Heegan into center field for a base hit. He teed off on the first pitch by Vern Rule here in the top of the fifth inning. And that is Mike's first hit of the season. He had gone 0 for 7, but delivers a single to lead off the fifth inning. Hit number five for the Brewers off Rule, and we're getting a little stirring in the Tiger bullpen. Brewers lead 2 to 1 here on the top of the fifth inning. Charlie Moore at the plate. Charlie bounced out to Mankowski his first time up. Rule delivers over to first base to drive Hegan back to the bag. Auburn getting the sign from May. Arroyo throwing in the bullpen. The pitch. It's butted foul. activity down on the Milwaukee bullpen too. Gary Bear is throwing but he may be loosening up that's all just getting his pitches in because I think he's due to pitch about Tuesday over in Cleveland. He can at first base nobody out here in the top of the fifth inning. A one strike pitch to Moore it's a pitch out but he can didn't go. Moore did not hit well at all last year, but he's hitting much better this year now that he's back behind the plate. He did not enjoy playing left field while Daryl Porter did most of the work behind the plate. Got another pitch out and he can didn't move. Moore wound up with a 191 batting average a year ago. Well, two years ago, he led the team in hitting with a 290 mark. Throw the first by rule and Hegan is back. 2-1 ball game and a 2-1 count here on Charlie Moore with Hegan at first. There's the set and the pitch. He goes this time. The bat is thrown at the bat and it's a grounder to first. Thompson makes the play at first. No play in Hegan at second base. That time Moore just threw the bat at the ball and hit a sharp ground ball to Thompson. But Hegan was running with a pitch. And so there was no play at second base. Moore does his job. He sacrifices himself to move the man into scoring position. It will not go as a sacrifice, but uh, he gave himself up. Now the play unassisted at first by Jason Thompson. Hegan at second now with one away. And Von Joshua at the plate. Left-hand batter 0 for 2 against Rule. The pitch to Von. He tops a foul in the dirt behind the plate. Well, I knew I'd have it sometime during this series. Uh, Jim Hegan batting for the Brewers. Jim, of course, is the Tiger bullpen coach, and he's down there guarding Fernando Arroyo at work now. His son, Mike, out at second base, the base runner. There's a fly ball lifted to left center field. LaFleur on the run. Here comes Kemp. Kemp passes in front and makes the catch. And Hegan remains at second base. Are well, there are two down. That brings up Robin Young. Robin, the number one pick by the Brewers in the June draft of 1973. And that one year in organized ball before becoming a regular shortstop at the age of 18 in the majors in 1974. The pitch to Robin. He takes one low, ball one. Two out, Hegan at second base. The Brewers lead the Tigers two to one. Off day tomorrow for the Tigers. Then the Minnesota Twins come in for night games Tuesday night and Wednesday night.
Brewers head for Cleveland in the Twilight doubleheader tomorrow. Breaking ball in for a call strike on Yount. Yount had a bloop double in the first inning and then fly to right in the fourth. Left-hander Bob Sykes gets back into the starting rotation to get the start for the Tigers on Tuesday in the opener against the Twins. And we'll see Pete Redfern firing for the Twins. The pitch to the plate. Ground ball to short to his left. Pass the glove of a riser into left field. A base hit. That'll score Hegan from second. And holding it first with an RBI single is Robin Young. Just out of the reach of Tom Verizer. It's now 3-1 to one, Milwaukee. Yount with his 10th RBI of the season. Well, two in the fourth and one here in the fifth. And the Brewers have taken a two-run lead. The batter now Cecil Cooper, two for two. A pair of singles for Cecil. Here's the set by Rule. And the pitch to Cooper. He looks, it's outside. Ball one. Rule taking a little extra time. He's checking the infield, which is swung around to the right on Cooper. Here's the set by Rule, the pitch. Swung on and missed. A breaking ball, jamming him at the wrist. Well, both of the hits by Cooper were as a result of a shift to the right on him. Ground ball deep in the hole the last time up given an infield single on, and the other will a line drive uh, through a normal shortstop position. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Well, the Brewers have a total of six hits. The Tigers have three. Takes a look at Yount at first. Throws over there, but he gets back. Yount can run. Has a big lead. And draws another throw. Diving back in with a hand. Enjoyed a long conversation with the first base coach, Frank Howard, before the ball game. He had to coach third last year while he was managing at Spokane. There's a fly ball lifted to short left field. Kemp coming on, still coming on, still coming on. Makes the catch. That ball kept being beaten down in front of him. But Kemp uh, kept after it and made the catch to retire the side. The Brewers pick up a run here in the fifth on two hits. No Tiger errors and one man left. After four and a half innings, it's Milwaukee three, Detroit one. Now, from City National Bank, new subordinated notes that make it possible for Michigan residents to earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes. These notes are available for as little as $500 and in increments of $100 above that. The 9% interest will be paid quarterly by check or by deposit to a CNB savings or checking account. The offer for the sale of these notes is made only by the offering circular. The notes are not deposits and are not insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or any government agency and are subordinate to the claims of depositors and other creditors of the bank. For complete details on subordinated notes and how you can earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes, visit any CNB office or call 961-2211. 961-2211. Although the many groups on hand here in free jacket day at Tiger Stadium, the seventh grade basketball team from Sacred Heart Academy in Mount Pleasant, which was under the tutelage of Dan S. Rose this past season. Saw some of the boys down there, but missed making contact with Dan before the game. Well, Vern Rule pitching today for the Tigers. Spent a lot of time on Friday helping out the Livonia Civitan Club in handing out prizes for the Special Olympics. Vern uh, working for that club, uh, spending a lot of hours last Friday morning, and they're very grateful. Here's Phil Mankowski taking a fastball low. He ran up on it as though to bunt, then laid off. Mankowski with an infield single, chopped over the mound in the second inning. 
The pitch to Phil. Strike call, so it's a 1-1 count on Mankowski. He'll be followed by Verizer and LaFleur here in the Tiger fifth. The pitch from Haas. Swung on, a little fly ball. The short center field coming on is Joshua. He makes the catch. Well, that one stayed up long enough for Vaughn to make a running catch. One down on the Tiger fifth. The batter will be Verizer. Tommy took a call third strike. His only time up against Haas. Here's the motion by the right-hander. He kicks and fires. It's on the corner for a strike. Into the motion, they pitch to Tommy. Strike two called. Haas worked for the most part last year at Spokane. He won 13 and lost nine. Had a high earned run average of 5.55, but got those 13 wins. That one got away from everybody. It was a slow breaking ball bounced in front of the plate. But Oz turned in a lot of strikeouts last year at Spokane. He's got some smoke. Has an assortment, uses uh, the four normal pitches. There's a fly ball down the right field line. It is blown foul into the off the facing of the second deck down above the bullpen. Riser got good wood, but a little bit too late on it. One and two on Tommy. There's the pitch to Verizer. He takes inside. That was close. Two and two on him. A bear is uh, loosening up on the Tiger ball pen. That's Ray Bear. There's a fly ball lifted to right center field. That's fairly deep. The wind has got that one. Joshua going back, still going back, makes the catch. Ah, uh, just a step away from the warning track in deep right center field. Two out in the fifth inning. And the batter will be Ron LaFleur, who has struck out twice against Haas. Tigers trail three to one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Tigers got a run in the second inning, an unearned run on an error by Robin Young. But the Brewers took the lead in the fourth on the two-run homer by Dan Thomas. And then added a run on Robin Yount's run-producing single in the fifth inning. It's 3-1. Curve on the corner. Strike called on LaFleur. Bonds just now finally getting that finger on his right hand well so he can grip the bat well. There's a drive to right center field. Joshua is right there. He reaches up and makes the catch. He was playing him over into deep right center field, and the ball went right at him. Now well, the Tigers get on in order in the fifth after five innings of play. It's Milwaukee three, Detroit one. We're in extra innings in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. See if you can keep the rally going. Who is the only switch hitter in the American League to win the Triple Crown? While you're taking a pause, treat yourself to a refreshing, cool Labatt's blue. <laughs> The answer, the Commerce Comet Mickey Mantle hit 353 for the Yanks in 1956, belting 52 homers and knocking in 130 runs. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt's. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. This game is being brought to you by Labatt's, brewed in Canada since 1828. By Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealers, see all their 77 models. By Marathon Oil Company, people who got together to do it better. By Champion Spark Plug Company, the fresher your plugs, the better your mileage. 
by City National Bank, the bank that really wants your business. By Sears, where America shops. And by the Detroit News, offering you the Detroit News Real Cheap Classifieds. Now, more Tiger baseball action with Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. Here come the Brewers to bat against Vern Rule in the top of the sixth inning. Tigers Farm Club at Evansville is off to a pretty good start. They've now moved above the 500 mark by two games as they walloped Wichita last night, 16 to three. Milt Wilcox, uh, who's now won three and lost one, got the beneficiary or was the beneficiary of a 21 hit attack. First pitch to Sal Bando, taken for a call strike. Bando is 0 for 2 against Rule. He's scored a run. Rule delivers. There's a foul fly down the right field line. Thompson giving chase, but he won't catch up to it. It bounces in the bullpen, then into the seats. Well, they really had some hits uh, against Wichita. Jerry Manuel drove in four runs, went three for four. Tom Brookins had four for six. Art James, remember him, out for a year with that Achilles tendon uh, injury. He's four for six in that game last night. Bob Molinaro went three for six. Eddie Brinkman's club at Montgomery doing very well, too. They uh, wound up splitting a twin bill with Savannah yesterday. Won the opener four to two, lost the nightcap by a run six to five. And it was carried away from him. It'll be called no play without question. On a normal day, an easy put up. This is not a normal day, wind wise. A bando given new life with a two strike count on him. With a pitch from Rule. Swung on, there's a ground ball into left center field, a base hit just beyond the reach of a riser. That's the second hit just like that. About uh, three inches outside the glove of a riser. So Bando on with a leadoff hit here in the sixth inning. Now let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. J. Roberts is good company when you want to throw evenings at 11.30 on Night Flight 76. And Mike Morse Kaleidoscope takes center stage in the theater of your mind afternoons at 1.15. Both the tradition on WJR Detroit Radio 76. First pitch to Dan Thomas taken outside for ball one. Arroyo back and throwing for the Tigers. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Bando draws the throw to first and gets back. Tigers trail three to one. Thomas hit a two-run homer his last time up. He cuts and misses. Stands a tall, rather slim right hand batter. A Saluki from Southern Illinois University. The 1 1 pitch to him. Swung on, a bouncer to short. Verizer has it. Goes to Fuentes for one. The relay. Double play. So they're two down on the second Tiger double play of the afternoon. The Brewers have pulled off a pair of double plays against Detroit. Here's Sexto Lascano. There's a drive to left field. Kemp backs up, reaches, makes the catch. A corkscrewing line drive off the bat of Sixto Liscano. Caught by Kemp for out number three here in the sixth. No runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left after five and a half innings. It's Milwaukee three, the Tigers one. We've got some other scores for you here. In the American League, 
Yankees have a big lead over Oakland. They got five runs in the first inning. A home run by Nettles with two on his fourth. Ellis against Torres. Boston leads California three to one in the third. Ross against Lee. Baltimore got a grand slam home run by Pat Kelly. They lead Seattle four nothing at the end of one. Paul against Palmer. Chicago leading Cleveland one to nothing at the end of two. Stone against Fitzmaurice. But Gamble has hit a two run homer for the White Sox in the third. Minnesota leading uh, Toronto two to nothing, and they're in the fourth inning. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh are tied 2-2. They are in the fourth inning. Norman against Royce. Robinson and Bench have hit home runs in that game. Tigers trail 3-1 to one as we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Tito Fuentes followed by Rusty Staub and Ben Oglevy for Detroit. Well, the Tigers are going to be home for two more on this homestand Tuesday and Wednesday nights against the Minnesota Twins. At the moment in the American League's Western Division, the Twins have a one-game lead over the White Sox. They'll be uh, sending out Pete Redburn and Jeff Zahn against Detroit in those two games. Zahn... Uh, turned in a victory over the Tigers when Detroit was at Bloomington the last trip. He's now won five and has yet to lose. Young man who almost called it quits in baseball. Tigers will go with Bob Sykes Tuesday, Dave Roberts on Wednesday. Both left-handers. Time called uh, just as Moose Haas was about to work. More dust at the plate. Cecil Cooper picking up a wrapper out near first base. A blown day here. There's a foul off the side of the screen, uh, almost into the upper deck. What is one for two? He laid down a pretty bunt in the third inning, just beyond the mound that Yelp charged, could not make a play on him. Bunt single for Fuentes. Handles the bat very well. Pass ready, delivers. Strike called. He got one across the letters. Fastball. Now the windup and the pitch. Fly ball foul down the left field side. It'll drift back in the seat. Tigers have only three hits off Haas, and they've left three men on base. The Brewers have a total of seven hits and have left three on base. They lead it three to one in the finale of this series. Here's the two-strike pitch to Tito. He swung and fouled that one to the screen. That was out of the strike zone, up around the fill of the helmet. A wood chopping that time by Tito. Batting left-handed, yet the outfield shades him toward left. Here's the pitch to Fuentes. He takes outside for a ball. Haas into the windup, a 1-2 pitch. There's a line drive to right field, a base hit for Fuentes. Otito has two for three. Two of the four Tiger hits. There's Rusty Staub. Rusty has grounded up to second, or rather to short, and walked. It's the second time of the game the Tigers have had their leadoff man on base. The first time came in the second inning, and uh, Oakley, who led off the second with a single, eventually scored. It's 3-1 Milwaukee, the Tigers. Unable to gain a sweep over anybody in any series this season, or unable to get together three straight wins, trying to do so today against the Milwaukee Brewers. Stop waiting. There's a toss to first. Fuentes had just started away from the bag. He's back. Tito with a very short lead, now lengthens it. Here's the pitch to Rusty. He pops one up foul behind the plate. This will be out of play. Fans in the stands still looking up, waiting for it to come down, but it hasn't yet. I don't think it will. Now they stretch by Haas and the lob over to first base. Fuentes goes back to the bag. It's 
Stop, patient at the plate. Here's the pitch to him. Swung on a bouncer to the right side. Big hop for money. Goes to second for one. The relay, double play, the third of the game. Well, that has really crippled any uh, attack of the Tigers or any rally opportunities. They're at two down. Nobody on in the batter, Oglevy. Well, the Brewers have pulled off double plays in the third, fourth, and sixth innings. Oakley one for two. He singled in the second, then bounced into a double play in the third. 3-1, the Brewers lead the Tigers. The pitch from Haas. Swung on and fouled. Back to the backstop. Remember, the advanced ticket office at Tiger Stadium here at the corner of Michigan and Trumbull is open every day from 9 until 6. Tickets available for any game of the season. Inside to Benji for a ball. Ticket prices this year, box seats at $5, reserved at 4. They're also available at ticket service outlets all over the area and at ticket agencies in Michigan and Ontario. The pitch from Haas. Swung on and popped in the air down the left field side. It's drifting foul. There's a run by Bando. He's under it. Makes the catch. Good catch by Bando as that pop did some uh, dancing in the air with a big wind. That's all for the Tigers here in the sixth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. After six innings of play, it's still the Brewers three, the Tigers one. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. And there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Right, 22 winners. One from each Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger iron-on patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th. And sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Mm, well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. WJR's Great Weekend puts you where the people are with special events, unique on-the-scene reports, total news and sports, weather updates, and so much more, Saturday and Sunday on WJR Radio. All the Brewers with two runs in the fourth on the two-run number by Danny Thomas. And a run in the fifth on Robin Yachts, a run-producing single, lead it 3-1 to one as we move to the seventh inning. Vern Rule has gone all the way for Detroit and Moose Haas, likewise for Milwaukee. Here's the veteran Don Mundy to lead off the seventh inning and back for the play-by-play -play after catching his breath out of the wind. Here's Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. Here we go now. Mundy, the right hand of that, if facing uh, Vern. 3-1, the Brewers ahead in the seventh. Money struck out and popped to short. He's 0 for 2. Swing a base hit left field down in the corner. Chased by Kemp in that corner. And Money will get at least two. Yes, sir, he's got a stand-up double. Just inside the back at third, a hard ground smash, putting Money at second. And bringing up Mike Hegan, who has one hit in two trips. That hit is first hit of the year. That is the eighth hit by the Brewers off Vern Rule. And the Tigers getting uh, the bullpen busy again. Arroyo starts to throw. Hegan, the left-hand batting uh, designated hitter at the plate. He'll be followed by Charlie Moore. Takes a high one, high and wide, to ball one on Mike Hegan. Yon has two hits, Cooper two to pace the attack. One apiece for Bando. Thomas, that was a home run. Money and Hegan. Now Rule, ready to go to work. Gets his sign from Milk May. Here's the pitch. He swings and beats a foul off his foot. One and one, the count on Hegan. Chicago leading Cleveland in the third, three nothing. Oscar Gamble added a two-run home run to their total. 
Baltimore leading Seattle four nothing in the second. The Yankees over Oakland five to nothing in the third. Boston ahead of California in the fifth inning three to one. Minnesota two and uh, Toronto nothing in the fourth inning. Here's the stretch by Rule. He delivers. Hegan swings at the bounding ball off the foot of Rule. Hit him on the right foot. Bounce over where Foyt is. Picks it up in short right field. Throws to Thompson. Not in time. Money takes third. And safe at first is Hegan. It'll be a hit. And Rule was hit on the foot. Got him on the right toe, I believe. And the ball bounded into right field where Foyt is uh, caught it. And fired over to first base. Ralph Houck's out there to take a look. Bill Beam, the Tiger trainer, is looking. A rule that is going to leave now. And Arroyo will come in and take over. Well, that's all for Vern. I'm not sure which foot it hit him on. On the right foot, it appeared. On the right foot, uh, Paul says. And uh, Arroyo probably will be allowed as much time as he wants to warm up at this point. A well, rule is out of the ball game after the single by Hegan and runners are at first and third with nobody down. That means that Byrne went six innings and pitched to two batters in the seventh. He allowed three runs on nine hits. He leaves two on for his responsibility. He walked one and struck out two. Well, Fernando Arroyo getting his warm-up tosses now. As Ernie pointed out, he may be allowed uh, extra throws because of the injury to Vern Rule. Getting the paid attendance here on Jacket Day today. And uh, it is 27,783. Fine turnout for Jacket Day. I'll that shot was off the right ankle, it appeared to me, of Vern Rule. And it took a high bounce out into a short right field where Fuentes uh, reacted very quickly and got the ball. But on that high bounce, it allowed Hegan time to reach first base by about a half a step ahead of the throw from Fuentes to Thompson. And moving to third on the play was Don Money. Arroyo has completed his warm-up tosses as he takes over for Vern Rule. Ernie? Well, Roy on a tough spot now. Runners at first and third. They'll have to play their infield in a little bit at this uh, stage. And the right-handed pitches. Here's a bounding ball off the foot of Moore. The ball bounces down toward Mankowski. It's ruled a foul ball. Arroyo with a record of one and two. This is his eighth appearance. Nando has the lowest earned run uh, average on the Tiger Mound staff. 2.39. Brewers lead at 3 to 1. They're threatening to add more here in the seventh inning with runners at first and third and nobody down. And it's a pitch out, but nobody's moving. Here's the set by Roy in the pitch. Swing, there's a little pop fly to right field. Maybe trouble, Ogilvy coming in. He can't get it. It's a foul ball by about a foot. Oh, that was close. Nobody could have caught that one. Nobody did catch it. It uh, went foul by no more than a foot. Deep of first base. Oh, the runners head on back, and the batter Moore comes back with the plate. Cincinnati has a 4-2 lead in the fifth inning over Pittsburgh. Chicago leading Atlanta. 4-0 at the end of three. Atlanta's lost 13 straight. Houston ahead of St. Louis. 1-0 at the end of two. The other National League games are late starters on the West Coast today. Hiller continues to warm up in the Tiger bullpen. Arroyo trying to get out of a spot here. Charlie Moore waits on the pitch. There's a foul ball out of play. The ball, the bat goes out to the shortstop position. And the ball went back of the plate to the screen. Four 
Point is under the inner grass. Thompson holding on the bag at first with Hegan. Now Moore standing deep waiting on Arroyo's next delivery. One and two the count on Charlie. Here it is. He takes the ball low. No game for the Tigers tomorrow. They will uh, resume action Tuesday night against the Minnesota Twins. Gene Mock bringing his heavy hitting team in. We hope you'll be out here with us to see the Tiger action on Tuesday night. Set the pitch. He swings and missed it. The ball was tipped and then uh, dropped by May and there goes the bat again. This time it's out past the mound on the first base side. Remember his last time up. It was a different situation completely on a pitch out or a, what appeared to be a pitch out. Moore threw his bat at the ball and made contact and bounced out the first. Now he's lost the bat three times in this game. A la Tony Oliva. As Moore digs in again, it's a 2-2 pitch coming up from Arroyo. Set, here it is. He swings and fouls it away. These two having a real battle between them. RBIs for the Brewers, two by Dan Thomas on his two-run homer. One by Yacht on a single in the fifth inning that drove home Hegan from second base. Well, the Tiger run came in the second on a single by Ogilvy. A stolen base. And then an error by Yacht. There's a bounding foul. It's down past the third base coach, Jimmy Bregan. Jimmy, the brother of uh, Bobby Bregan, former big league ball player, coach, and manager. Bobby now president of the National Association of Baseball League, which is the minor league structure. Now, Roya checks his sign with May, still trying to get out of the jam. Two men on and nobody out in the Milwaukee seventh. They lead three to one. The pitch on the way. Swing, base hit, left field. That will score money easily. And Hegan checks in and holds it second to base. It is four to one, the Brewers lead. Moore picks up an RBI single. That run is charged to Vernon Rule. Well, the Brewers have cashed in here in the seventh on three straight hits. They go to the top of the batting order. Von Joshua is 0 for 3. Von bounced to first, struck out, and applied to left. Now it's a left-hand batter against the right-hander. The pitch is wide for a ball. He was ready to bunt, didn't offer. Now the Tiger infielders are charging. Only in the second and third innings have the Milwaukee's failed to hit. Rule got him out one, two, three in each of those two innings. Here's a ball outside again, ready to bump. The pitch was wide of the plate. Moore at first, Hegan at second base. Neither one getting much of a lead right now. Now Arroyo backs off the mound. He wants to rub up that ball a little bit. Well, we got the word now from Bill Brown in the press box that Vern Rule suffered a bruised right ankle when the batted ball hit him. Arroyo ready, pitches, and it is a bunt foul. Back of the plate in the dirt. Milwaukee with some timely hits has a lead in this game. They've got four runs on ten hits. The Tigers have one run on four hits. Uh, Joshua will be waiting on a two-on delivery from relief man Arroyo. Tiger infield still looking for the bunt. Piece of paper picked up by Rich Garcia, the plate umpire who dashed out from behind the plate toward the mound to pick it up. Still a strong breeze from left field. There's a pitch low. 
make it a 3-1 count on Joshua. Fred Hatfield, trying to coach, pacing up and down in front of the dugout bench. Ralph Hauk leaning over, getting some pebbles as he watches the action. Roy already pitches. Joshua takes it. Ball four. The bases are loaded. Well, Nando was trying to keep the ball away from him so he wouldn't butt it too readily. And it was not in the strike zone. So he walks. That puts Joshua at first. Moore at second. Hegan is at third. Nobody down. And Robin Yon, who has a double and a single and an RBI, two for three steps up. And the Tigers now have no choice. They're going to have to pull their infield in. Almost to the end of grass. Play the ground ball to the plate. That's a very sharp hit ball to shortstop. Uh, Buentes might get back to second. There's a bounding ball to the right. Base hit. In to score comes Hagan. Charlie Moore right behind him. He'll score. Here's a throw to third. Safe there. Here's Joshua throw to second. And out at second is the batter, Robin Young. The right field to Ogilvy, to Mankowski, and then to Buentes for the out. But two runs have scored, and it is six to one. The Brewers in the lead. So here comes manager Hauk out again, and we may get a pitching change at this uh, stage of the game. Yep, he wants John Hiller. Two runs in, and the Brewers lead it six to one. Five of those runs are charged to Rule, and one is charged to Nando Arroyo. So Paul will see Mr. Hiller. Fernando, who has been extremely effective uh, all season long in middle relief for the Tigers, uh, unable to get anybody out after coming on for Vern Rule here in the seventh inning, gave up the run-producing single to Charlie Moore after quite a battle at the plate, and then pitched two finally to Von Joshua, walked him to load the bases, and Robin Yount delivered the single to right, which had the infield been a normal depth, looked like it would have been a routine double play ball, but... The infield up tight with one down and uh, or rather with nobody out and the uh, bases loaded. They were forced to play for the play at the plate and to bring that infield in tight and the bouncer just got through between first and second at the right field. A two-run single by Robin Yout who tried to stretch it on the throw to third. He tried to take second and was cut down for the first out of the inning. So Fernando works one-third of an inning and has allowed two hits and one run. Five runs total of charge to the starter, Vern Rule. It's now six to one Brewers as John Hiller takes over with runner at, a runner at third base and one away. First man he's going to face is the left-hand batting Cecil Cooper. A Yount has now driven in three of the Milwaukee runs this afternoon with a three for four day. And the Tigers are going to keep that infield up tight, Ernie. Here's a Cooper at the plate. We've got a left-hander against the left-hander. Infield in close, man at third base. That's Joshua, a good runner. The wind-up by John. The pitch, Cooper takes the ball high, checking his swing. Six runs, 11 hits for the Brewers. The Tigers have one run on four hits. The third and final game of the series. The Tigers took victories in the first two. Hiller kicks and delivers. It is high and wide. 2 and 0 on Cooper. Mando waits on deck. Now John uh, checks his sign with Milt May. And the left hander delivers again. It's a strike and above the knees. Two balls, one strike on Cecil Cooper. Outfield around toward right. There's a ball wide to make it a 3-1 count on Cooper. Yep, knocked in uh, three runs. Two delivered by Thomas. And one by Moore. Bounding ball to first. Thompson coming home to the plate. May has the ball now running Joshua back toward third. The tag is made by Mankowski. And safe at first on the fielder's choice is Cooper. He might have missed the tag. Brinkman called him out anyway, whether it's uh, running out of the baseline or whether he was tagged as academic. It's a fielder's choice. Two down, a man on first, and Bando at the plate.
Sal has hit into a double play. He was safe on the fielder's choice and had a single one for three. Heidemann running for Cooper and there's a ball outside. Jack Heidemann is the runner at first base now running for Cooper. It's a strike on the outside corner. One and one, the count on Bando. The Brewers lead the Tigers six to one in the seventh. Flip over to first by Hiller. He's back in time. Uh, John ready to go into action. Kicks and deals. Watch out. It's in close. He almost hit him with a curve. Baltimore six, Seattle nothing in the fourth. The Yankees six and Oakland nothing in the fourth inning. Strike. There was a breaking pitch above the knees outside corner. Man on first. Heidemann getting a lead. Two men out. Hiller's pitch is in close. Make it a 3-2 count on Bando. Dan Thomas waits on deck. The Brewers with three runs. Breaking it an open here in the seventh inning. They've got a 6-1 lead over the Tigers. Now the left-hander Hiller sets and delivers. Here's a fly ball to left center, not deep. Here comes LaFour running hard, still coming, and makes the catch. Three runs for the Brewers on four hits, a walk, no errors, and a man left on base. We go to the last half of the seventh. It is Brewers, six, Detroit, one. From the pipeline in Wyoming to the oil wells down in Texas Getting oil out of the ground is one thing. Turning it into something people can use is another. We got people together we thought could do it better, and we called the company Marathon. From the waters of Alaska to the research labs in Denver, the oil wells down in Texas. First baseman for Milwaukee is Ken McMullen replacing uh, Cecil Cooper. Oh, we'd like to send a Tiger salute on his birthday to a great Tiger fan, uh, Greg uh, Seabree. And right now we'll pause briefly for station identification. This is a Detroit Tiger baseball network. Mark Avery takes it nice and easy from his vantage point in the music hall afternoons from 3 to 6. And Warren Pierce provides the evening sunshine with interviews and involvement nightly at 7. Both a tradition on WJR Detroit. Leading off for Detroit, it'll be Steve Kemp here against Moose Haas, who's pitched a strong game. He's given the Tigers only one run. That's good on an error. He's allowed them four hits. The right-handed pitches, and it's a fastball to move Kemp away from the plate. Ball on on Steve. Cincinnati now leading the Pirates in the seventh inning, four to three. Here's a fly ball to right, fairly deep, going over Lescano, and he can't get it. It bounds into the seats. It will be a two-base hit for Kemp. A double for Steve Kemp, a one-hopper bounding over the barrier at the 370-foot marker. Jason Thompson stepping up now. The Tigers have that leadoff man on second base. That is only the fifth hit allowed by young Mr. Haas. Thompson has uh, bounced out first to pitcher coverage, and he's drawn a base on ball. Brewers with a commanding lead. They lead by five, six to one. Jason takes the curve high and wide, ball one. 
Here comes Bando in to talk with his young pitcher. Now Bando's back at third. Thompson in the batter's box waiting on a 1-0 delivery. He looks at the ball. Oh, fastball. 2-0. The count on Jason. Well, the Cubs are pounding Atlanta again, six to nothing in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch. Thompson takes strike on the outside corner. Two and one on Jason. He'll be followed by May and Mankowski. I feel around the right on Thompson. Here's the set. And Hostel of his strike, he hit that corner again. 2-2, two -two the count on him. Steve Kemp continues to impress everyone with his aggressive hitting. He has one for three today. He's out there now with his hit, a double. Trying to get a lead down off second base. There's a fly ball at the right. It is a fair ball off the screen. Kemp is rounding third. He's coming home. It'll be a double by Thompson. The Tigers get a run back. The cut for the to six to two. A low line drive. It hits the barrier and bounded back on the playing field. Back to back double starting the Tigers seventh. And here comes the Milwaukee manager, Alex Gramis, out toward the mound. We had some kind of announcement there from the press box, but uh, we didn't catch it. We'll uh, have to check on that. Anyway, there's a meeting uh, going on at the mound now. Gramis has come out to talk the situation over. Man, he's going to make a pitching change right here. He'll get a new pitcher coming in for the Milwaukee's. And it'll be Bob McClure, the left-hander, taking over, pitching to Milt May. Well, did you find out about the announcement, Paul? Yeah, Ernie, that was simply uh, telling us about a little bit belatedly that Cecil Cooper was out of the ball game because of the twisted right knee uh, that occurred during the rundown between second and third so we're going to get the new pitcher Bob McClure a young man we saw yesterday come on in the late innings against Detroit flame throwing a left hander who was the third Kansas City Royal uh, the player to come over in that deal during the offseason that saw the Brewers give up Daryl Porter and Jim Colburn so McClure taking over here he'll be facing two left hand batters the next two in order at least in Milt May and Phil Mankowski. The Tigers adding their second run of the ball game. Their first came back in the second inning. In the meantime, the Brewers had charged in front a six to one lead before this bottom of the seventh inning. That line drive by Thompson was really a shot. Now with a stiff gale breeze blowing in from left field, anything hit down the right field line that has any loft to it at all is going to be carried foul. And it was hit so hard, so fast, and so low on a trajectory that the wind could not affect it. It hit the fence about uh, above the barrier and about two feet there, just above the 325-foot marker. He didn't miss hitting a line drive homer by very much. And it just hit that fence and then bounced right down onto the warning track. Ready to go, Ernie. Here's Bill May to face the left hand of McClure. Six to two, the Brewers lead it. And May takes a curve over for a strike. Outfield straight up on Milt, the left fielder. Gives him a lot of the left field line. Here's a bounding ball to first. Knocked down by McMullen, the throw to the pitcher. McClure, he can't hold it. 
And rounding third is Thompson. He's headed home now. McClure picks up the ball, does not have a play. And the Tigers get another run in to cut the lead to 6-3. to three. May is safe at first with nobody down. We'll wait for the scorer's decision on that one. That was not an easy play. McMullen went to his right. It'll be scored as an error against McMullen as he bobbled the ball and then picked up and didn't make a very good throw to McClure. McClure couldn't handle it as he came across from the mound toward first base. And then uh, when the ball was dropped, Thompson was able to come on in from third base. Here's Mankowski at the plate. He's had a single of the fly to center. He bunts the ball toward first. Here's McClure off the mound to pick it up to throw to first. He is out. Moving on to second will be Milt May. Good bunt, but a good fielding play by the pitcher McClure. It'll be scored as a sacrifice of the pitcher to the first baseman. And the batter will be Tommy Verizer. Did the scorer give uh, May an RBI or not? No RBI on that uh, earlier play. All right, sir. No RBI for May. Run scoring on the arrow. So here's Verizer at the plate. Six to three, the Brewers have the lead. Man on second, one man down for the choice. There's a chopper hit back toward the mound. Fielded by McClure, he'll throw to first. In time, a good pickup by McMullen at first base with May holding it second all the way. Well, McClure has made two good fielding plays. And one not so good. And one not so good is right, that first one. But he's getting a workout, I'll tell you. He's learning how to field that position here in the seventh inning. And making him go get it, all right. Here's LaFleur now, he struck out twice. And the fly to the center fielder. Six to three. The Tigers getting two back here in the seventh inning. But they need some more. McClure, the left-hander, steps off the slab. Ron uh, getting almost on top of the plate now against this left-hander. And he takes a half cut. That is ruled a ball by the plate umpire Garcia. Two errors have been charged to the Brewers. And the Tigers scored a run on each. There's a line drive. Base hit. Left to the field. May rounding third. He's coming home. Here's a throw by Thomas back into the middle of a diamond. And an RBI single by Lafour pulls the Tigers within two of the Brewers. Six to four, Milwaukee leads it. Tito Fuentes will be the next batter. That run is a charge to the current pitcher, McClure. Tito's fly to right and picked up a couple of singles. Now he's batting right-handed against the left-hander. Six to four, the Brewers lead Detroit in the seventh. It is a ball in close, ball one on Tito. McClure ready, fires over to first, and LaFleur back in time. Now Ron tried to edge off again and the left hand is set and delivers. There's a high foul. Back a third. It'll be out of play. Into the upper deck and what a bounce that one took. And a gentleman from Rose Township caught that one on the big hop. One and one. They count on Tito. Tigers have scored three times. They've cut the Brewer lead to six to four, seventh inning. McClure, the left-hander, delivers. Here's a sky 
Fink on the outside corner, just above the knees with a fastball. Now the left-hander about ready. Here's the one-two serve coming up. He takes a wide one. That one almost got by the catcher more. Looks like he might have been crossed on the signal. Six runs, 11 hits, and two arrows for Milwaukee. Detroit, four runs, seven hits, and no arrows. It's the seventh inning, the third and final game of the series at Tiger Stadium. Tito waits on the 2-2 serve. Runner goes. The ball is popped in the air. Foul over this way. It'll be out of play. Jacket day at the old ballpark and a turnout of over 27,000. Mr. Lou Matlin and his crew to be congratulated. Giving out the blue vinyl jackets here to the youngsters. Day like this, you need a jacket or two. The win is waiting on another 2-2 delivery from McClure. And the set. The left hander holds it. He fires over to first. Back in time, LaFleur. Boston's tied California. They're 3-3 three, three in Boston at the end of five. Now the set on the left hander ready. He pitches. Here's a foul upstairs. Right of a bar booth. Whoa. Two, the count on Tito. Now well, the set by McClure, ready again. The runner goes, the ball is hit the left field. It may be fouled, it's sliced, hooking into foul territory. Oh, he hit that ball hard and it hooked foul by a couple of feet. Well, Fuente has given him a real battle. That Cincinnati-Pittsburgh game is in the seventh inning at Pittsburgh, and the Reds uh, still lead 4-3 to three over the Pirates. Cardinals are at a Houston 2-1 to one in the fifth inning. Chicago leads Atlanta 6-0 in the sixth. McClure ready. He pitches. It's a fastball wide. A full count on Tito. Waiting on deck is Rusty Staub. Tigers trying to keep it going. They've picked up three runs. They've cut the lead to six to four. Seventh inning. Man on first and two away. Now the full count delivery on the way. He swings and misses. Struck him out on the curve. Oh, McClure finally triumphed there with a strikeout and the side retired. The Tigers get three. Three runs on three hits. One error, one man left on base. We go to the eighth inning. It is Milwaukee 6, Detroit 4. During this break in the game, here's an update from WJR News. The leaders of seven nations closed their London Economic Summit today with what they called a message of confidence. They announced what they termed substantial agreement on ways to fight the world economic crisis. The agreement provides for joint efforts to cut energy waste to help developing countries and to stop the spread of nuclear materials. The Soviet news agency TASS in a dispatch from London says the summit failed to produce any agreement on major issues. TASS said the meeting was held in what it called an atmosphere of differences. Authorities in Tokyo are holding an American man who allegedly held a razor to the throat of a female passenger today and ordered a Northwest Orient Airlines jumbo jet to Moscow. The hijack attempt was thwarted by a flight attendant. Wayne County's sheriff says within the next couple of months, another 100 to 150 deputies will be idled because of a declining inmate population. The temperature in Detroit right now is 66 degrees. This is Bill Smith, WJR News, reporting. Dan Thomas the lead off for the Brewers in their eighth inning. They had the lead over the Tigers by two runs, six to four. John Hiller on the mound.
Here's Thomas at the plate now, and the right hand batter takes a cut and misses on a Hiller changeup. Strike one on Dan. Tigers have uh, pulled closer, but they still are a couple behind, six to four. Each team picked up three runs of the seventh. This next pitch hits the dirt in front of the plate and bounds away. One and one, the count on Thomas. Breeze are coming in from left field toward the plate. There's a little chopper going foul back of the plate in the dirt. Chased down by Milt May. And Mr. Kerr is getting up the trusty overcoat. We've had some very changeable weather around these parts in the last two or three days. Thomas waiting with a one-two serve. Swung on a bounding ball. Deep short of the right goes Verizon. He has it. Here's the throw to Thompson. Pulls him off. And Thomas is safe. Well, Tommy fielded the ball cleanly, but he threw it wide to the home plate side of first base. And an arrow will be charged to Verizon. That gives Thomas a life to start this eighth inning for Milwaukee. And the batter will be Sixo Lescano. Right field is 0 for 2. He's flied out twice. He walked his middle turn at bat. There's a ball low. He was ready to bunt. Texas leads Kansas City down there in Arlington. 2 nothing at the end of 1. Tigers are still anticipating the bunt here from uh, Lescano. He wants to check with the third base coach, Jimmy Bragan. Charlie Grimm had that problem one time when he was managing the Cubs and coaching at third base, and he finally decided he'd just hold up the sign that said bunt to the batter so there wouldn't be any mistake about what sign was on. Here's the pitch. He takes a strike. That was in above the knees. One and one. Well, Lescano did the right thing, though. If you're not sure, the manager says always stop and check. Don't be uncertain at any time about what you're supposed to do. One and one. They count on six, though. Hiller ready delivers. Here's a breaking ball over, but a little bit low. Two and one. Thompson trying to keep that runner, Thomas, close at first base. He's got a fair size lead now. Here's the set by Hello, the look over to first. And the pitch swung on a little looper, hit over the head of Fuentes. He can't get it. Jumped in the air. It was past his glove. Ogilvy bobbles it, but picks it up, and there's no advance. Runners at first and second, and nobody down. So the Brewers are coming right back with a batting attack. They've had an error, and then a little uh, bloop single into short right field to put two men on and bring up of the second baseman, Don Money. Tito didn't see that well. He didn't start back very quickly, and uh, had he, he might have been able to gather it in. Just got over his glove and uh, dropped in. Well, let's see whether Money is uh, hitting away or bunting here. They've got a two-run lead. Runners at second and third, at uh, first and second. Mankowski's got to play it a little bit at third base. He squares to Bunny, bunts the ball. It's down the first base side. May picks it up. It's ruled a foul ball. Grass has been cut, that inner grass. It's not as high and thick as it was a couple of days ago, but it is still thicker than some. Uh, Heller checks his sign with May. Money waiting at the plate. Set by the Tiger left-hander. The pitch. He squares. He bunts the ball toward third. And this one will roll. It will be picked up foul by John Hiller. And for the second time, Thomas slides into third. But he's got to go on back to second. Well, the Yankees are romping again. They've got a 7-0 lead over the Oakland A's at New York. 
at the end of five. Baltimore leads Seattle now in the fifth inning, six to two. Chicago leading Cleveland. The Indians have dropped to last place. That one's the White Sox five and the Indians two in the sixth inning. Don't forget the scoreboard show when the game's over. Paul Carey will have all the scores for you. Man on first, man on the second. Brewers lead the Tigers six to four in the eighth inning. There's nobody out. Strike two count on money. He's tried to bunt twice. Now he swings away, hits the bounding ball wide at third. Mankowski comes up with a good throw over to second in time, over to first from Fuentes to Thompson, not in time. It is a force out at second. Thomas takes third. Good play by Mankowski. He had a long way to go to the glove side, got the ball, and then uh, fired to Tito for the force out. Tito's uh, relay not in time for the double play. Man on first to the man on third, and Hegan is the scheduled batter. I don't think we'll see him hit. We'll have a pinch hitter for him. Steve It'll be Bry. Steve Bry. Bry, a right-hand batter. He has four hits and 22 trips, one of them a home run. He hit it here. He has two RBIs. So it'll be Bry batting for Higgin. B-R-Y-E, the former Minnesota twin. Infield and double play depth on Steve. Right-hand hitter who stands deep. Hiller looks him over. Set by John. The pitch and Bry takes a strike. That was a fastball. Brewers, six runs, 12 hits, two errors. Tigers, four runs, seven hits, and one error. Hiller trying to hold him off now and give the Tiger batters a chance in the last couple of innings. Here's the stretch by John and the pitch. Bry swings and... Uh, Nubs a little foul over on the first base side. That one just slid it off the end of the bat. Jim Crawford uh, at work in the Tiger bullpen. Bob Sykes gets a starting assignment Tuesday when Minnesota comes to town. And it'll be Pete Redfern to face him. Then the Wednesday night game, the final game of this homestand, it'll be Roberts against Zahn. Is a bounding ball to short. Verraza up with it. Throw to second. One. Tito's throw to first. Not in time. The run scores. Now the Tigers don't get the double play. Milwaukee adds the run to make it seven to four. It'll be an RBI for the pinch hitter Brian. Charlie Moore stepping up now, the number nine batter. Seven to four, the Brewers lead. They've got a man on first base and two men out. The runner at first is Steve Bry. And Moore takes a breaking pitch letter high inside corner for strike. An error, a single, and a force out getting that run in. There's a ball low, gets by May. Bry's not moving, though. He started towards second and then decided not to. Infield back on uh, Charlie Moore. Well, we've had that big breeze all day long here throughout the game, coming in from left. Moore takes the ball low. Fastball from Hiller. Tigers started with Rule, uh, then Arroyo, and then Hiller. And the pitch. He swings and fouls it upstairs to the right of the plate. 2-2, two -two, the count on Moore. Uh, John ready to work again. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing. There's a little pop foul. Back of the plate. May having trouble and can't get it. May never did really quite see that ball. And then the wind took it, blew it behind him toward the seats. Not too tough a play, but he just didn't handle it. 
Quinn made it a little tough. See whether the scorer wants to give him an error or not. So far, we've had no announcement. 2-2, Two -two, the count on Moore. And the pitch. He swings and misses. There goes the bat to third base. The ball is in May's mitt, and the side retired. So unless we hear otherwise, we'll say there was no error charged to May. The totals will be one run on one hit, one error. That was the one by Verizon. And one man left on base. We go to the last half of the eighth inning. Brewers seven, the Tigers four. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. And there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Right. 22 winners. One from each Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger iron-on patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So, kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th. And sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. Well, the Tigers are uh, getting uh, three in the seventh after Milwaukee got three. Now have to come back uh, a little bit more since Milwaukee picked up one of the eight bidding. And the Brewers have a seven to four lead over Detroit. McClure, the left-hander, ready to go to work. He'll be pitching to Rusty Staub. Ogilvy and Kemp here in the eighth inning. The Tigers need instant runs. Rusty without a hit in this game. He's bounced to short, drawn a walk, and then hit to second base for a double play. Three Milwaukee double plays have helped uh, stymie the Tigers this afternoon. McClure sidearms him. It's in too close. Ball one on the designated batter. Outfield around the right, but not much. The pitch is a strike call. Uh, one and one on stop. Milwaukee, seven runs, 12 hits. The Tigers, four runs and seven hits. The only Tiger with two hits is 20s. They've had a couple of extra base blows, back-to-back -back doubles by Kemp and Thompson to get a run in the seventh. Here's a ball high. Again, he gives you that hip and sidearms here. McClure obtained from the Kansas City organization, getting ready to go to work. Now, time called at the plate. Some dust uh, swirled around there, and Staub wanted to get out of the batter's box. Now he's back in there to wait on the left-hander. There's a tap ball in the dirt. He was jammed by a fastball at the hands. 2-2 on Rusty Stop. McClure looks him over, and uh, time again calls some swirling dust down at the plate. Back in the batter's box, he's waiting, 2-2 pitch. Swing and a pop-up foul off a third. Bando calling for it, now chases and makes the catch. One up and one away. Oakleby will be the Tiger batter. Men's had a single bounce into double play and foul to third. Left-hander against the left-hander. The pitch on the way. It is a ball in too tight on Oakley. Tigers trail in this one by three. Seven to four behind the Milwaukee Brewers. Watch out. That is a high, hard one inside. He ducked away. Two and oh, the count on Oakley.
In too close to the fastball as McClure will make it a 3 0 count on Ben. Kemp will be on deck. Winds and pitches. Strike in above the knees. Throwing mostly fastballs now is McClure. Now Ogilvy uh, digs in to wait on the next one. It's a 3 1 serve. Here it comes. He swings and fouls one on the screen. So McClure and Ogilvy have gone to the full count situation with one out of the eighth inning. Brewers leading it. Here's a pop foul. May blow out of play. Yep, it will. Moore just waved at that one as it landed back and stuck on the screen. Three and two to count on Ben. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He swings and misses. The ball gets by. The catcher Moore, Ogilvy running for first. The throw by Moore is a wide one. But backing up McMullen is money and Ogilvy will be safe at first base. It'll be a strikeout and a pass ball charge to the catcher. Oh, McClure gets a strikeout. That's his second. But on the pass ball, Ogilvy is safe at first base. Let's pause the station identification. This is a Detroit Tiger baseball effort. Jay Roberts is good company when you want a friend. Join him evenings at 1130 on Night Flight 76. And Mike Warp's Kaleidoscope takes center stage in the theater of your mind afternoons at 1.15. Both the tradition on WJR Detroit, Radio 76. Steve Kemp batting with the Tigers. Man out of the man out of the eighth inning. Throw to first. Ogilvy back in time. Kemp has a double and three turns at bat. He started the three-run rally in the seventh with a two-bagger. Set by McClure, the left-hander ready, and Kemp takes a ball high, ball on the count on Steve. Outfield deep to right, a lot of room between Thomas and the left field foul line. McClure kicks and pitches. It is a wide curve, 2-0, the count on Kemp. McMullen uh, holding it to the bag at first with Ben Ogilvy. Now McClure to the set position. He pitches. There's a little tapper hit on one hop to second base. Money has it. You go to second, they get Ogilvy. And it's a force out. Kemp is safe at first base. Check swing that time. The ball hit the bat and bounded past the pitching mound on one hop where Money grabbed it and uh, negotiated the force out. Two down, that'll leave it up to Jason Thompson in the Tiger eighth inning. Jason with a bounce to first, a base on balls, and a run-producing double, one for two officially. Tigers got a run in the second. They led one to nothing. Then the Brewers got two in the fourth to make it a two-to-one lead, and they've led ever since then. The Tigers have tried to play catch up since then two out camp at first base and Thompson swings a pop fly hit the right center field money going back is under it and makes the catch in right center for the out well, the Tigers don't score in the eighth inning no runs are no hits no errors and one man left at the end of eight it is Milwaukee seven Detroit four Say you wouldn't mind if your car got a little better mileage and maybe ran a little better too. Well, here's some good advice. You don't have to put up with a car that's running rough or wasting gas. The solution might be as simple as yanking out those old plugs and dropping in a fresh set of Champion Spark plugs. Just remember, the fresher your plugs, the better your mileage and performance.
Forbes Kaleidoscope and Adventures in Good Music with Carl Haas. Two back-to-back -back award winners from Radio 76. It's unique entertainment afternoons on the Goodwill Station. Ninth inning on tap on the sunshiny Sunday at Tiger Stadium. And the Milwaukee Brewers trying to stop their losing streak and keep the Tigers from sweeping the series. At the lead, 7-4 to four over the Tigers. With Von Joshua, the leadoff man that started off in the ninth inning. Rule, Arroyo, and Hiller have been on the mound for the Tigers. Joshua is 0-3. He walked his last time up in the seventh. Left hand about it, chops a foul back of the plate. Strike one on Vaughn. Remember, Paul Carey will have the scores for you on the scoreboard show when the game's over. Stay tuned. Bounding ball to second. Fuentes has the hop. Go to Thompson. He's out by several steps. One up and one away. Robin Yard has had a good day at the plate with a double and two singles. Three runs batted in. Will be the next man to bat for the Brewers. Brewers uh, head out of Detroit over to Cleveland. They'll have a twenty-eight double header there tomorrow. The Tigers do not play tomorrow. There's a strike call. The next Tiger game will be Tuesday night. And Pete Redfern pitching for the Minnesota Twins against the Tiger left-hander Bob Sykes. That'll be a two-game series uh, here at Tiger Stadium. Swing and a miss by the young Robin, and the count is strike two. Ken McMullen, first baseman, waiting at the on-deck circle. Brewers seven, the Tigers four in the night. Here's a fly ball into the left field. Kemp comes in, goes back now, reaches up and makes the catch. Two down in the Brewer ninth inning. And here's McMullen up for the first time. Better than right hand batter hitting 211. This is his 11th game. Boston leads California 4 to 3. They've gone to the seventh inning at Fenway. Foul out of play. That one hit the mask of May and bounced all the way back into the box seats to the right of the plate. Brewers lead 7 4, ninth inning. Hiller kicks and deals. There's a pop foul out of play. Upstairs on the first base side. Strike two, the count on McMullen. Hiller ready, winds, pitches, hits a cut at a miss. He struck him out. So John got about one, two, three. In the Milwaukee night, we go to the last half of the ninth inning. It is Brewers 7, the Tigers 4. Now, from City National Bank, new subordinated notes that make it possible for Michigan residents to earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes. These notes are available for as little as $500 and in increments of $100 above that. The 9% interest will be paid quarterly by check or by deposit to a CMB savings or checking account. The offer for the sale of these notes is made only by the offering circular. The notes are not deposits and are not insured by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or any government agency and are subordinate to the claims of depositors and other creditors of the bank. For complete details on subordinated notes and how you can earn a steady 9% interest per year for the seven-year life of the notes, Visit any CNB office or call 961 2211. 961 2211. City National Bank. Last half the ninth inning at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. The Milwaukee Brewers have seven runs on 12 hits and two errors. The Detroit Tigers, four runs, seven hits, and one error. Haas started, McClure relieved him in the seventh inning for Milwaukee. The Tigers have used three pitchers, Rule, Arroyo in the seventh, and Hiller in the seventh inning. And now McClure's job is to try to hold off the Tigers in the last half of the night. It'll be the bottom part of uh, Ralph Hauk's batting order. May, Mankowski, and Bariza are the first three scheduled batters against McClure. May has uh, been safe on an error. He's hit into a double play to first base and again was safe on an error. 
Well, both the Milwaukee errors have occurred on balls hit by May. And each resulted in a run. Here's a cut and a miss by Milk. Strike one, the count on him. Bob McClure, the left-hander, sidearms him, and it's a bounding ball to first base. McMullen has it. He'll make the play unassisted. One away in the Tiger ninth. McClure came on in the seventh inning, and he has not allowed a Tiger hit since then. One run scored off him, but that was uh, after May got on first base. On the error, he was able to come on home. It was a hit, I beg your pardon. McClure, uh, LaFleur had one in the uh, seventh inning. The only hit off McClure. That was the hit that got May home. Now here's Bankowski, and he takes the ball in close, ball one. Bill has single fly to sit and sacrifice, one for two. He takes a strike inside corner above the knees. Pretty good pitch there. One and one, the count on Mankowski. Brewers lead 7-4, ninth inning. Bounding ball to right field, a base hit. Well, Mankowski continues to hit. There's a throw to first. He's back in time. McMillan ducking behind him. Lescano fired, but Phil got back safely. Now, uh, here's Mickey Stanley, who will be inserted as a pinch batter for Tom Verizon. And Mr. Gramis goes out to the mound. He has Castro working in the bullpen, if he needs him, a right-hander. And that will be all for McClure. We'll see uh, Bill Castro, the right-hander, coming in to pitch to Mickey Stanley. The Tigers trying to get it going. They trail 7-4. to four. McClure came on and uh, got roughed up a little bit in terms of uh, a fielding in the seventh inning. He had entered the game with the starter, Moose Haas, after back-to-back -back doubles by Kemp and Thompson had KO'd the starter. An error by first baseman Ken McMullen allowed the Tigers to get a run. And then... Uh, McClure was kept busy on a sacrifice bunt and a bounce out of the pitcher before he gave up a run producing single to Ron LaFleur. So McClure gave up one of the Tiger runs in the ball game, but allowed just two hits while he was in there. McClure working a total of two and a third innings. He walked none and struck out two. And Bill Castro will be taking over here, the right-hander, with Stanley having been announced as the pinch hitter for Tom Verizer. Castro, a right-hander, has been used a great deal this season by Alex Gramas. This will be his 12th appearance of the year. He and McClure have now both appeared in 12 games. And that's more than any other Tiger pitcher, for instance, has seen action so far this season. Castro has three wins and one defeat, all of his appearances in relief. And he has turned in five saves already this year, so he has a hand in eight of the 14 Milwaukee victories coming into the contest today. Uh, Castro, a strong-armed right-handed pitcher who was used strictly in relief since coming up with the Brewers. Last year, for instance, he had a total of eight saves over the season, uh, winning four games and losing six. Another one of the strong young pitchers on this Milwaukee staff, Castro is just 23. Ernie? Stanley batting 276. This will be the ninth game of the year for Mickey. He'll be followed by LaFleur. The ninth inning, the Tigers have a man on and the man out. They trail by three runs, seven to four. Stanley batting for Tom Verizon. Bill Castro, right-hander on the mound, pitching to right-hand batting Stanley. And it is a ball that's over the plate but low on Mickey, ball one. Here's the stretch by the right-hand pitcher. Stanley swings and misses on a breaking pitch, one and one. 
Pittsburgh leads Cincinnati in the ninth inning. Six to four, Pittsburgh. Mount Castro ready again, delivers. There's a foul upstairs, and the count is one and two on Mickey. Castro hurt his arm back in 75, recovered last year, had a pretty good year. Young man from the Dominican Republic. Getting ready to pitch to Stanley now with a one-two count on Mickey. Mankowski at first base, one down in the ninth inning. He swings on the broken bat, ground to hit to short. Yon over to second one, money's relay to first. It is a double play, and the game is over. Milwaukee takes the final game of the three-game series. No runs, one hit, no arrows, and nobody left in the Tiger ninth inning. And the final score here today on Jacket Day, the Brewers 7 and the Tigers 4.